What's up everybody, Unrested here. Um, today I'm doing kind of a video response, and this is kind of a video response to Victor's recent video, um, which title I'm probably going to mess up right now, Why Am I an Asshole? And then I think like the actual video title itself, because that was the thumbnail, says Why Am I a Jerk? And it kind of talks about people who watch his videos and think he's kind of a jerk with some of the stuff he says or does, for example, stopping people from smoking in no smoking places or um, littering or uh, I guess just being very blunt with his own opinion. Uh, as I think also with uh, some of his stuff, which he calls the stupid emails, which um, any and all of us who are J vloggers in Japan probably get a million of this. So. Um, I sympathize with him, the stupid emails of people like, I want to be a doctor in Japan, can I do it? <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, are, are you a doctor in your own country? Ah, uh, no, like, so maybe worry about that first. Uh, can you speak Japanese fluently? Because no one's going to come to a doctor that doesn't speak their native tongue. Um, you know, just like, very basic things that are the first things that pop into your mind when you think of such a question. and. The funny thing is when you respond with those, you know, return questions are like, no, I never thought about that. I need to know Japanese to be a doctor in Japan. Yup. <laughs> it's kind of an important job to be able to speak the native language of the country. Oh boy. Yeah. So, and then, you know, his responses sometimes may seem heated or kind of blunt or crass. Um, but really, I mean, he's giving people kind of a kick in the ass. Um, He's giving people kind of a look at what you're saying, look at what you're doing, and think about it before you write me. Or if you're really fucking serious, go research the hell out of this shit. I can't tell you how many people send probably him, I'm sure, and me messages about what college they should choose in Japan. Why are you asking some dude on the internet what college you should choose in Japan? That's your future, man. I don't know why you would ask some random person. If, if you've done like a ton of research, and you're gonna to come to me with a list of colleges and you're like, I've heard about this one, I've heard about this one. Do you know any background information or known of anyone who's gone there? That's cool, that means you actually did your shit, you like researched, you're looking into like all different aspects of it. Um, you wanna get kind of customer reviews is what you're asking about. That's totally different, I respect that. That means you're really looking into your future. But if you just hit me up with, what college should I go to in Japan? Do we mean all of Japan? Do we mean my prefecture? Do we mean only Osaka City where I live? Uh, do you mean Tokyo too? Because I know nothing about colleges in Tokyo. Um, I mean Hokkaido, Okinawa, like what, you know, come on. Like, it's the same question as how's the weather in Japan? How's the weather in Japan is like, oh my god, how's the weather in Japan? What season, what month, what part of Japan? Hokkaido, Okinawa, what area, what region? What, I mean, come on, man, like, that's like, what, how's the weather in America? Okay, is it different in Florida than it is in Maine? Because like Maine and Florida, like almost the same difference as Hokkaido and Okinawa, Tro almost like subtropical on up to like subarctic. Um, well, Maine's not really subarctic, but you get, you get my point. Okay, don't go in there and be like you know, it's not subarctic. We hate that stuff too when people want to come there and do comments like that. We usually just delete you because we're like. You're so dumb that you think I have to issue out a fucking disclaimer for every goddamn thing I make. That's another thing, too. Um, recently, I've been getting a lot of people who talk about setting up disclaimers and being like, oh, you don't need to do all these disclaimers. And you know what? Those people are smart. They're like, I realize that you don't, you know, you're exaggerating to make a point or you're using hyperbole or sophism. And you don't need to do a disclaimer. Yeah, unfortunately I do. Yeah, um, because just the other day I did a video on an article in Japan called uh, A Moment of Silence for the White Males Trapped in Japan. And I talked about this guy who was 40 years old in Japan, still going to school and was worried that he wasn't going to have a job when he got out of college. And I was like, yeah, pretty much in Japan you're not. Um, because that's this, that situation's really bad too. Try and start a career when you're, you know, in midlife in Japan is very difficult. Well, of course, I get some random guy who watches it and is like, I'm, I'm in college and I'm 40, why would you hate on me? And it's like, are you in Japan? Because I'm only talking about that specific situation. 
well, no, I'm not. I'm in my own country. I guess it was like America or something like that. But I just think you're, you're putting hate on everybody who's 40 and in college. No, no, no. But you know what? I forgot to do a disclaimer. I forgot to say, I only mean this person that I'm talking about in this story right here in Japan, in his situation with Japan's cultural differences. Oh my God. You know, like, I mean, if I labeled every single disclaimer in every video before I started it, you'd have like 40 minutes of disclaimer before I did like a five minute JFAC. Um, and right here, you're kind of seeing reasons why we, somehow, we sometimes have asshole responses. When you constantly get stuff like that, and I mean, you've got to realize I've got like 23,000 subscribers, so I literally have one fourth of what his biggest channel has, Victor. Just imagine four times as much of those type of messages and emails coming in because he couldn't, you know, make sure to put a disclaimer for every little bit of hyperbole he places into his videos or every little bit of exaggeration or sometimes when he references something very specifically, he forgot to mention that, okay, right now I'm just only talking about Japan because my videos are Japan specific and this is your first time watching my videos, I know, and maybe you don't even know I'm based in Japan and you've done zero research and you're just coming here shouting the first thing that comes to your mind when you comment. And I really apologize, I didn't do a fucking disclaimer for that. You, you realize where that can drive a man insane, where it can make him, you know, suddenly snap back pretty quick. And this is something people don't understand the aspect of doing YouTube videos if they don't do them themselves. Um, I think a lot of the times the people who do say, hey Scott, you don't need to do a disclaimer and stuff like that, um, I think they're intelligent enough to realize that I don't mean every single person, you know, I'm not doing a blanket statement, I'm not just covering a generalization of people with the things I say that mostly I'm doing my very unique situations in Japan which is great, I really appreciate those kind of people. And sometimes even those kind of people uh, tell the other people in the comments for me, they do kind of a job for me almost by saying, look, he doesn't mean everybody's videos are just about Japan, like learn a little bit about the guy before you just start shouting at him. Um, but unfortunately, guys, yeah, I do, I do have to do those disclaimers all the time. Um, like even now for this video, I should have to make a disclaimer. I'm not shouting at any one person for making this video. I'm just doing kind of like a general sweep of the things that we face and why it can suddenly make us have snappy comebacks or be assholes on video. Um, but there's other aspects too. Um, I think one of the things a lot of people uh, don't tune into or realize if they don't have their own channel um, and there's nothing wrong with that if you don't have your own YouTube channel. I'm not looking down on you or anything. But I think one thing it is hard to understand is most of us who've been doing this for a while have become so comfortable with the camera and our viewers that we feel like we're talking to friends. Most of us would probably say we feel like you guys are our friends when we make these videos and talk to you. And when you have a conversation with a friend, you restrain yourself less. Um, you don't hold back as much as far as letting them, you know, brass tacks, let them know exactly what happens, what goes down. Um, and sometimes you always get a newcomer who jumps into the conversations like, this guy's an asshole, he's too blunt and caustic. Um, we're really, I'm doing it to be friendly. Um, let me give you an example. When you have a dialogue with someone, there's a back and forth. And even if you have two opposing views, if that person is your friend, because they are your friend, you know that they are generally a good person. Uh, and you respect who they are, even if they have you know, directly opposing views. And you're patient enough and open-minded enough to sit there and listen to them, have their two cents in some sort of argument that you may have, whether it be a political argument, a social argument, etc etc all right you get it um with us on youtube it's the same thing like we feel like we're friends and stuff like that unfortunately the aspect of it that i guess you can't really change unless you have like a skype chat or a google's hangout is it's only a one-way conversation um, i am taking the podium i am standing up and speaking uh, and not giving anyone else a chance and it's not because i want to be an asshole and hog the camera it's because this is how YouTube videos work. Um, 
Of course, later in the comments, we have our discussions. I always try to open up the comments at the end and say, you know, please place your comments, your thoughts on this issue and stuff like that. And we can discuss it later. Um, and some people open themselves up to great debates and stuff like that. I recently had one guy who came on to uh, my conversation according to Shinzo Abe's um, work hours that he wants to start them earlier. And this guy and I debated like for a long time. Uh, I can't I can't remember his username right now. I just remember he had like some kind of anime character, some kind of manga character or something like that for his little icon. And our, you can go check it. I left the whole conversation up there. I never, I almost, I almost never block or delete someone unless they just jump into the comments and shout like, you know, like racist slurs or like, or there's some people who come out there and be like, in this video, you fucked up your information behind this because on this other video you said this. And what they don't understand is that over time laws have changed in Japan and they're just going out of their way to like pick out little things or like, your visa information is wrong on your first video. Well, my first video is like seven years old and uh, of course visa laws have changed drastically in the last seven years. and. Uh, I've had to make new updated visa videos and if someone just jumps onto that video and just starts yelling at me that I'm wrong, I just delete them because it's just like, you know what, I'm not going to go and try and find the new updated video, deliver you that because you were too lazy to find out if I ever updated my information and because you're obviously just out to be angry, you know. If someone comes on there and is like, oh, I don't know if you know, but they changed actually and then I just could be like, oh yeah, I made an updated video. But there's guys who come on there like, in this video here, your information is not correct with this video here. And I've been watching many videos and it's different. And you're a liar and stupid. And just like, you know what? Okay, yeah, fine, sure, believe that. Have a great time. Bye. Um, and then just, of course, like I said, the people who just come on there and do like racist slurs or, you know, they're just like, fuck you, fucking faggot, die. And stuff like that. And you're just like, oh, okay, you're here for that. Okay, bye bye. And, you know. Uh, it, that, that kind of stuff that doesn't add anything to the conversation. But I like people who come in and debate some of the stuff. They're like, let me let me show you my side of the view. And I'll sit there and I'll do the conversation. I won't, you know, some people say like, no, you're not listening to me. I'm trying to blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, no, no. If I don't want to listen to you, I'll just block and delete you. That's I've been doing YouTube long enough to know the people I don't want to listen to. And I'll just block and delete you. Um, but I will definitely debate and have a great conversation with you in the comments. But... Getting back on topic, sorry, went off on a huge tangent there. Um, our videos are a one-sided dialogue. Um, and the unfortunate thing, too, is that video responses don't really exist anymore on YouTube. There used to be a point where you could add a video response to people's videos. Um, I'm not really sure why YouTube took that off. I guess it was maybe a Google decision. They seem to like to decide really bad ideas for YouTube. Um, and... Uh, like I said, that, that, that leaves us with a one-sided, you know, version and doesn't let you get your word in and your two cents in. And uh, that, can kind of, that can kind of piss people off. It's kind of like this rhetoric being shoved down their throat without a chance for them to speak. And they can get emotional and suddenly strike out and think we're assholes. And it's like, no, if you and I were in a room or at a bar having a beer and having this conversation, we'd both be very calm, respecting each other's opinions, very open to listening to both sides. We wouldn't ever suddenly shout, you're an asshole for thinking that, uh, unless you were fucking crazy. Um, and we'd probably get along quite nicely and respect each other's you know, thoughts and you know, the analysis that we put together in our own minds. I think we'd uh, really, really... Uh, approve of each other's dispositions whether we agreed or not on whatever we were arguing on really and then I guess we get into also the aspect to where people have called him an asshole because uh, he's done stuff like stop people from smoking in public where there's an obvious gigantic sign and most times when he does do this like if he says he, I'm stopping this guy from smoking because there's a huge sign here Number one, there's usually like more, more than one sign, like multiple signs. Like those people definitely know when they're doing it. Here in Japan, they make signage very, very visible. It's not like, oh shit, I didn't even notice that sign there. So most times people just kind of know what they're doing. And there's times people in Japan just fucking whip out a cigarette and start smoking like in a mall. I've seen a guy try to smoke in a mall. I saw a guy one time, there's like a huge like underground subway with tons of people in it and just started lighting up smoking there and there's like signs there was like signs everywhere 
And uh, I remember I didn't even have to say anything to him. I just like gave him this look like, really? And his other friend was like, oh, hey, you know, it's like no smoking, right? Like his other friend got so embarrassed, he stopped and was like, dude, you're totally embarrassing yourself here. Like everybody's looking at you and this guy over here has got the stink eye on you. Um, put it out, put it out. And so he's usually, I would say, almost 100% of the time in the right. I mean, there might be certain situations, like you said, the one where he, he grabbed the guy and pulled him back down the stairs. Yeah, yeah, I would never uh, promote, you know, manhandling anybody. I think mostly due to the reasons, like, of you could get into, like, uh, all different types of legal trouble and you could get into... Uh, you know, you don't, you don't need to get into a fist fight over a goddamn cigarette, so. And I'm not saying that's what Victor was trying to do ever, but maybe that guy would have, if he had been more of an aggressive person, he seemed more kind of like, oh, whatever, man. Um, but, you know, some people might act really aggressively. Um, but we do these things for one of the main reasons that Victor stated. He said, Japan is a country where many times people will just nod and smile and let you get away with a lot. Um, and when we see that kind of injustice, it makes us angry. And for us, we're kind of already pariahs. Um, I know for sure with me, like with tattoos and everything, I'm pretty much already a pariah. People look at me and they're like, what the fuck, who's this guy? Um, sometimes they're creeped out, sometimes like, I'm already the scariest guy on the train and I haven't done anything other than sit down and look at my cell phone. Um, and so I know already people are kind of like wary of me. So if people are already going to have an inkling of like, man, I'm going to judge this guy, I might as well let them judge me on something that I do, um, that they're not going to step in for, for example, the person smoking in the park in a tiny, you know, in the kid's park. And, you know, you can go off on your, oh, secondhand smoke doesn't hurt anybody. Great. Okay. You know what? I'm not a scientist, so I'm not even going to try and argue that. I don't know either way. I do know that almost every single smoker I've ever seen tosses their fucking cigarettes on the ground and steps on them in Japan. Now, I'm not saying every country does this, but they definitely do it in Japan. They leave shitloads of stuff. Even when I filmed the one guy the one time in the park, he left his package of smokes, he left the plastic wrapper from his smokes, he left the cigarette he smoked, and he left the matches that he used on the ground. Uh, matches, little kids, good combination, you tell me, all right? So it's stuff like that. It was the litter that he left behind too on top of it. And it was just a common thing that smokers do in Japan. They, they stomp out their, you know, the byproduct from what they do all the time. Um, like I said, I don't know. Is that common in other countries? I, I think if you tried to do that all over America, you might actually get in some trouble. You, you, you know what? In America, most people are probably like, dude, what are you doing? Pick that up. Don't leave that there in the ground. Come on. Um, whereas in Japan, no one comes up and says anything because they're like, well, it's not my, you know, that's not my place to do it because uh, I don't know if that person's crazy or what or like I don't know if they're gonna flip out for me I don't care they can flip out do it um, go crazy I'm still gonna tell you you know um, if no one's gonna try and hit me over a cigarette if they if they do um, definitely definitely they're crazy <laughs> probably pro okay probably if someone was gonna hit you over a cigarette over telling them to put out a cigarette you could already see that sort of crazy from a mile away right you know, that kind of person's like, who knows? Um, so, that you got those situations where we just, you know, Japan's an awesome country. We want to keep it awesome. We don't want to keep it a country where people know that they can get away with breaking laws and do it for that reason, just almost sometimes out of spite. Um, you know, just the other day I saw going up the escalator, uh, this old lady walked up and she, she stopped on the side where you're supposed to pass through. It's, like, it, it's pretty much the area where everyone says torimasu, which means like coming through. Like, it's, the, it's the fast lane, it's the walking lane. You've got it in New York. I know at least you New Yorkers know what I'm talking about. Um, let's just say you don't stop there with like a baggage and everything and like a suitcase and everything. But she was like ancient. She must have been like a billion years old. She didn't know any better. I don't think she even knew that she was in that lane. She just stopped right there. And uh, this dude just comes barreling through there and almost like knocks her down. Um, and I'm on the other side where it's just like the standstill side. And I watch this dude come barreling down uh, and like almost knock her out. And I was just like, oh fuck no, dude, fuck you. So um, I put out my own elbow to stop him as he's coming up. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a second, dude, wait a second. I'm like, what the fuck's your problem? Like, you know, um, and 
you know, I'm of course saying it in Japanese. And then, okay, and also this is this is kind of a funny thing. When I do this, when I talk about stuff and translate it to English from Japanese, you've got the assholes who hop on here and like, yo, you're not like Denzel Washington. You don't talk like that in Japanese. It's like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I'm not super smooth. It's not like an action movie. I'm giving you the best translation I can so the people who watch my channel can understand it. Not everybody who watches it speaks Japanese. Bravo for you for figuring that out. Good job. Good job. You got it. Um... So, I stopped this guy, and I'm like, well, f what, fucking slow down. What the fuck's the problem here? He's like, she was standing in the passing lane. I'm like, dude, she's an old lady. She didn't even know, man. Just calm down. And so I waited till she got all the way to the top, and I kind of held this guy's attention the whole time, like, you know, stayed in an argument with him. And when she finally got to the top, and I said, all right, apologize. You know, say gomenasai to her. And so, this, luckily for me, this guy was a short little guy, <laughs> short little angry old guy. It was an old guy versus an old woman. And I was like, say sorry to her. That was really fucking rude. And he was like, sorry. Like a little kid. Like this little like, I know I took your toys away and it was a bad thing to do, but I'm not really that, I'm not really that sorry about it. Because pouty, pouty, sulky, sulky face. <laughs> fucking little immature shit. Um, so I made him say sorry. And that's just like a situation where like, come on, man, that's not fucking cool. You don't knock down an old lady and rush past her. Where are you going? I know you're already retired, bro. Come on. You're not Jack Bauer. Nothing gonna explode. <sighs> so, yeah, when I see stuff like that, Japan, for the most part, is a very peaceful place. And I like seeing that peace kept. And if it is gonna take a little bit of me stepping in once in a while and making myself look even more like a pariah, like everyone around you is probably uncomfortable when you do something like that, when you're like, whoa, dude, stop and say fucking sorry. Um, they'll feel uncomfortable, but it's funny because later, when the whole scene clears out, the Japanese people came up to me like, hey, that's fucking cool, dude. Like, even like young, like little high school guys were like, ah, you fucking told that dude to say sorry. Like Yankees and everything like that. The guys with the crazy long mullet in the back were like, ah, you fucking told that old dude to say sorry. They came up to me with like the bleach blonde ugly hair. Uh, and <laughs> they were laughing their head off. They were funny kids, man. Um, but, you know, even they want to do that, but see this the, the problem is with the way society works sometimes in Japan is there's like an echelon right so like a younger kid like that if he came up to a grandpa that grandpa could shout him back down because of the echelon of where they're placed in society um, almost from the time that you're born in Japan you know your place in society and you're going to be going up through that echelon uh, through your entire life and you don't step out of that line and the other people who are below you or above you, don't step out of those lines. Um, and if you do, it makes you a social pariah. Well, as a gaijin, I'm not placed into any of that stuff. I'll never be any kind of echelon at all. I can create my own or I can destroy my own, pretty much. So that's why I don't care when I go and do stuff like that. It makes it easier for everyone around me to see a little bit of justice without having to break their echelon. Um, you know, that's, that's the way I look at it. And if that makes me an asshole, all right, fine. I'll be the asshole, all right? Uh, if it takes me to be an asshole to keep Japan the awesome way it is, which I'm... <laughs> the way I just phrased that right now, I'm like, I'm fucking keeping Japan awesome. Like, no, I'm not seeing myself as that. I just listen to myself say that. I'm like, well, I sound like I'm, like, talking about myself like a superhero or something like that. No, I don't, I don't see that. These are, like, you know drops in a gigantic ocean these aren't doing any you know big things like that but within my little area my little ward my district my area if i can do stuff like that to see it stay peaceful cool i'll do it all right um and let me just leave you with this all right sometimes when we give advice it's kind of blunt it's kind of harsh um, i've done videos before where i've been asked the same fucking question over and over and over again um, so sick of hearing it. For example, like I said, the can I be a doctor in Japan question, which pretty much at this point people ask me as a joke. Um, you know, people asking me for uh, how do I get into the JET program when if you've researched the JET program, unless that other person has been in the JET program, which I've never been in, never talked about in any of my videos, um, they're not going to have the details because that's a very specific interview. Um, that's a very specific job with the Japanese government. Um, going through the embassy and all that aspect if you go to a channel where it's like my Argonauts where it's like here's here's my playlist on how to get into jet Then you've gone to the right place um, 
if you come to me and you say, have you ever been in the JET program? That's different. I, I, I'll just be like, oh, no, sorry. And then it's like, cool. But it's like, I want details on how to get the visa and everything in the JET program. Yeah, I don't know why you've come to my channel for that. Or uh, I want to be a doctor in Japan. It's just like, are you a doctor in your own country? Like, has this always been your life goal? Or did you suddenly decide this? Or you get this stuff. It's like, should I drop out of high school and go straight to Japan? It's like, come on, really, man? Really? Don't do that. Um, and sometimes when we answer these, we answer these really blunt. Like if I get the kids who, who ask me, like, should I drop out of high school and head over to Japan and try to get a job? It's just like, fuck no, dude. You realize like no one's going to give you a fucking job if you don't have a high school degree in Japan, let alone you don't have a college, you know, degree. All right. Okay. High school diploma, college degree. Sorry. See, have to put a disclaimer in there right now or someone will be like, Scott, you said degree. People in high school don't get a degree. They get a diploma. They should constantly... See where we can constantly get like worked up like this into asshole mode. Um, so yeah, that's the thing. Um, you get stuff like that constantly, and sometimes we reply in an assholeish way. We have those quote unquote stupid emails that uh, Victor talks about, and we answer very blunt. Um, and I think something maybe younger generations or people who are overly sensitive need to realize is that some of the best advice you'll ever get in your life is blunt as fuck. When you first hear it, it may hurt the hell out of your feelings. Some of it may even just absolutely crush you. You must just be like, oh shit, like I just made that person really angry and just realized that pretty much all the dreams I made up in my head are bullshit. Um, and you're crushed and the first thing you may want to do is like you'll go through a couple stages like maybe you'll be angry you'll be sad um, you'll be regretful um, that's fine you can go through all those you can be angry at us you can be regretful you can be you know upset and everything but realize when your mind finally clears out and all those emotions leave you and you can think about it clearly you may realize that you've been given some of the best advice of your life from the people who are assholes to you because they're just talking clear and without boundaries. They're cutting away all that fucking red tape, all the sugar coating, all the icing to try and hold you by the little hand and take you, you know, baby steps at a time to get you where you want to go and just kicked you through the fucking door. You landed on your knee, you skinned it. You're going to sit there for a while and be like, oh, oh, oh. And then when finally the pain clears, you can be like, Oh damn, he got me through the door. I'm here. I finally fucking got here. Oh, his his way worked. His way worked, right? Your mind finally clears and you can think about, damn, what he told me is true. I really do need to get on my shit. The, these are the times where we've said stuff before to people like, look, if you're really fucking serious, you need to Google this shit. You need to research this. You need to go to this website. You need to go study this kanji. You need to go to this Japanese website to learn this. You need to go to this job website. You need to look at these schools. You need to research your college. Don't ask some dumb guy on the internet like us. Go do this research by yourself. Some of those are really asshole response, really snappy, quick, brash, and blunt. And the reason is because we're kicking you through the fucking door. We're not taking you by the hand and leading you by baby steps. You're going to fall on your knee. You're going to be hurt a little bit. You're going to cry for a little bit. You're going to feel some anger. Maybe like, why did that guy push me? And then when your mind fucking clears, you're going to realize that guy just gave me some blunt ass advice that got me where I wanted to go a little bit faster. And sometimes that's what we do. For the most part, I would say both Victor and myself tend to do a more gradual progression of how we give you information. Especially when it's a question that is very, very rarely asked, or we get a question that we're like, damn, that's something even I haven't analyzed before or thought about. We realize that's not on everybody's mind. That needs to be taken some time. We do need to stop even ourselves in research. Um, well done. And we respect that. And we think that's awesome that you open up our minds even more to a broader horizon of questions that there might be about Japan or getting here or stuff that's here or aspects of the culture. Maybe sometimes I've had viewers who've said, what about this place or this like ceremony and I'm like holy shit I've never even heard about that and I research it and I'm like damn you taught me something about Japan that's awesome that's sick but there's certain ones and, and you know what they are you know what they are because you see every J vlogger talk about the same things again and again and again that they get um, by this time J vlogging has been around long enough that you've seen the same J vloggers complain about the same questions over and over and over again how do I become a teacher in Japan have you done any research at all? Have you Googled anything about that? Have you looked into anything about Japan? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's people who message me who done such little research about Japan. I had a guy recently 
I'm not going to say any usernames here, but he asked me why I talked about things in the sense of a dollar when Japan uses yen. And I was like, look, bro, if you're trying to correct me, it's yen. Y-E-N, yen. Uh, and he was like, oh, thanks for teaching me how to spell it correctly. And this other, <laughs> this other viewer came along and was like, no, <laughs> no, you fucking idiot. You said yen, that's Chinese money. He said yen, that's Japanese money. You didn't even know the right country and stuff. And he was like, what? But both of those countries use the same money, don't they? Oh, really? See, like, if you're, like, at that point where, like, you don't even know China and Japan at this point pretty much fucking hate each other and want nothing to do with each other, and the fact of them both using the same currency is, like, not anything that's going to happen anytime soon for that, for sure, uh, until these two settle their differences, um, you would you would laugh your head off at that question. I mean, uh, do, do China and Japan use the same currency? Yikes. Um... There's no Asian Union, so sorry, the answer is no, they do not. <laughs> um, so, I mean, like, you know, we're getting stuff like that, like, daily, like, non-stop. Our Facebook inbox and our YouTube inbox is filled with stuff like that. Mind you, we pick through it and find some really fucking great questions, really intuitive analysis, analysis of things that people are interested in like that, and we really respect that. Um, but there is times where some people flip a switch on us and we give them some blunt ass, what some would say, jerk advice or asshole advice. Um, when really that's us just being like, look man, you know, we're not going to hold you by the hand anymore and baby step you, we're going to kick you through the door. Um, that's just my two cents on it. I don't know how you guys feel. What do you feel is like some of the biggest asshole vloggers? Uh, maybe J vloggers too. You can list it below. Um, I don't want to see any like heat started over it and people get into fights about, yeah, he is an asshole, fuck him. Um, I don't want this to turn into like a super crispy hate war. Uh, I just want to see like what your opinions of how some people maybe give really blunt advice. Who do you think is the best at not necessarily babying you through it, but giving you kind of a balanced, um, hold your hand but at the same time be very blunt with you. Um, I think we could learn a lot from those people because I feel like a fine medium is what we all want to reach. Um, and let me hear, uh, you know what I'd love to hear? Let me know the stupidest question you've ever heard anyone ask about Japan or Asia in general because those just, they kind of make my day, they crack me up. Um, I couldn't even be angry at the guy who said doesn't Japan and China use the same currency? I mean, it was just such a, like, it was comedic genius. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All right, guys, until next time, I'm Unrested. I hope you enjoyed this ramble. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good one.